Okay. I just want to get on the right route. Just knew he weren't going to stop, didn't you? Right, let's pick the route up straight away. That's what I was a bit worried about. Anyway, good morning YouTube. It's Lofty and Linny here. We're just on the way back up to Andorra from Fuguer. We had quite a stressful ride down here because of all the snow on the tops of the hills. So we had to do a bit of a divert and sort of go south to come back. But it all worked out okay and it probably wasn't that much longer way round so it was okay. Anyway we had a wonderful couple of nights and we went in a lovely old fashioned Spanish uh, brasserie with an open fire barbecue which was very very nice. Yesterday we had a very very steady day. We thought smack bang in the middle of the holiday, chill out take it easy we even sat in the sun for about three hours and just did absolutely nothing it was lovely very very pleasant so we're off and guess which road we're on yep you've guessed it this is the n260 we're heading across to a place called a lot and then ribbery and then we turn slightly north to get up to Andorra again. So we'll get us rolling. And I'll have a chat in a minute or two. I don't actually want the north one, do I? I want Ripple. Oh, it says Ripple. Ripple Andorra. Okay, folks, so we've just come off the main road at a lot, and we're taking the signs now for Ripple, which is uh, the 260 still. It's a lovely day, 18 degrees. It's just dropped slightly, isn't it? Ripple straight on. Big town this is, isn't it? A lot. This is called a lot Nord. We came through the main town yesterday. Um, it was rammed. Not yesterday, the day before. Sorry, I lost a day. Oh, YouTube. This is Ripple. Ripple. Quite a pretty place. We follow the 260 all the way here, there's a church. We're going to sit and have a nice cup of coffee. There's Linny. Yeah, lovely. Okay, YouTube, so what we've done is we've gone to Ripoll and we took a slight divert. So instead of going up the 260 and through the ski resorts of La Molina, we've took one over, we're going across a different road. It's called the GI401 and 402. It looks a nice pass 
and it's one we've never done before so we thought we'd take advantage and have a bit of a ride over it so I'll keep the video going for a while see what it's like It's mountain bike country. It's walking country. Something for everyone, eh? Okay, that's uh, got rid of the the baggage of the cars. We can sit back and enjoy the road. Settle into a nice, easy rhythm. Oh, cyclists and all sorts. Amazing place, Spain, you know. Don't really matter where you go when you leave a town, as long as you don't go on the main conurbation, the seas and the A roads and all that, you stick to the end roads. You don't see many cars and many traffic and you seem to be able to just top along and enjoy yourself lovely. And this is what's known as a Sunday afternoon wobble. Anyway, I suppose I'd better tell you a bit about before we go out, hadn't I? I haven't really discussed it much. Why did we go to Fuigair? Well, it was quite simple, really. The N260. <laughs> if you think it starts more or less Pamplona way. So if you run a diagonal line following the map, the mountains, of course, the Pyrenees, from Pamplona to Fuigre, that's more or less the route the N260 takes. It nips up into, into Andorra and comes back down, of course, so you can have a bit of a, a side trip up there, like we did. And you can ride it down and ride it back. And it doesn't really disappoint in any way, shape or form. There's little diverts you can take you can take like a northern strip or a southern strip very easy very nice so we're on the way back to Andorra now which I'm quite looking forward to and we're having we're having a couple of nights in Andorra Andorra de Vela where we stayed before but Fuigre what a place now, I was aware of Salvador Dali. I didn't really know much about him. As you know, we live in a town with a Tate, and it's a Tate modern. Well, Mr. Dali was an impressionist. He was one of the, the Cubism gang. Now, I don't know much about it, but it's fairly bizarre. It's different, different game altogether. And uh, a strange story, really. He was the second son of Mr. Darley. 
the first son was called Salvador Dali, would you believe? It, unfortunately, the young Salvador Dali didn't live very long, died very young in his infancy. So they had another child, and they called it Salvador Dali. And they said, during most of his lifetime, that he was the reincarnation of his brother who died. On all accounts, this did have an effect on uh, young Salvador. And he was always a bit of a loner at school, and artistic. Anyway, after the First World War, he started painting and all this. He went to Madrid and came back up this way. Anyway, as you've probably seen some of his pictures, they're quite different. When things changed a little bit was when he discovered sex. Well, it happens to most people, doesn't it? And uh, he got married and he started putting a lot of sexual connotations into his paintings. And one of the, the pieces he uses a lot or depicts a lot is the lobster. Now the lobster has got something to do with sexual connotations, I don't really know. But one of his most famous things is a telephone, an old black telephone where the handset is a pink, a, a pinky orangey red lobster. And this is one of his really famous arts, well, I suppose it's an art effect rather than uh, a painting. And I believe that one's in Scotland. But there you go, Salvador Dali. Bit of a different chap, eh? Fascinating, really. We didn't go to the museum for the same reason as I don't go to the Tate Museum. I'm, I'm, I'm not the most artistic of people. Uh, I can appreciate people who do. Uh, the museum itself is fabulous. The building's beautiful. It's been uh, changed over the years. And if, uh, if you're artistic anyway, it's well worth a visit. The actual hotel we stayed in, the hotel president, had a good garage. She only charged us half a parking space because we moved the bike around the corner slightly, which I thought was brilliant. It was €19.50 to park a car. And she said, would you be able to park it in one of the spaces at the side? I says, yes, of course. She said, how does eight euros sound? <laughs> I said, eight euros sounds fine. So I paid 16 euros for two nights parking, which in a big city is very, very cheap. I was quite pleased that they distinguished uh, bet between motorbikes and cars. If there was three or four of you and you all took up one space parking your bikes in, she'd have done you a deal between the three or four of you, which is good, really. Because when you park on these Sabo places, which is like our NCP, if you like, you don't, they don't there's no sort of uh, discretion, if you like, between cars and bikes. And that's what happens on some of the toll roads, you know. That's why I always try to go to the booth, not the automatic one. Because if you go to the auto one, even if you've got a tag, if you go to the auto one, you pay the price of the car. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? But if you go to the manned one where there's a personage, male or female, who can look after you, there's a chance you might get a cheaper rate. As it happens, on this route we're taking, there's a bit of a toll. There's a great big massive um, tunnel through the mountain, which cuts through and brings you out the other side. Now, it's, a, it's about 10 euros, it's not cheap. But sometimes it's best to take um, a toll through the mountain and go up really high and get freezing cold. And as I say, there was there were snow capped two days ago, but the weather's turned much better. The funny thing was, down the valley just before we came up in Ripoll, it was no, um, 15 degrees, 15. We're going up the mountain now and it's 19 degrees. It's very sunny, it's a beautiful day. It's lovely. 
Oh yeah, the hotel. I was thinking about the hotel, weren't I? There's, there's quite a few Dali paintings in the hotel, so you can actually get a feel for what Dali did just by uh, standing in the lobby or some of the halls in our hotel, the president. I just thought I had that one in. Anyway, I'll come back to you when I've got past this Ford Fiesta. What a road this is, it just uh, never ceases to amaze. We're on the Colma Roller at 1090, nearly 1100 metres. So I should imagine that is the top. There's a little cafe there, we're on our way back down. I'll give you a look, see. I'll leave the camera running so you can get a feel for the, the road. It's a cracky road. GI 401, GI 402. It's on roads like this, the DCT is just amazing. Okay, YouTube, I've uh, I'll put the camera on briefly. We just come down the bottom of the mountain pass and we're heading up the mountain. I just wanted to give you a bit of a shot of this to see what so as you can see what we're seeing to be fair. We're gonna go through a huge tunnel in a moment and come out the other side, but uh, I thought this might be nice for you to see. Just to the side of that big lump in front of us is the ski resort of resort, the ski resort of La Malina. And that's where the old N260 will take you if you wanted to go straight over the top of the mountain. But we wanted to do the, like I said before, the GI 401 402, which has been a lovely road, fabulous. But I thought I'd give you a bit of a view of what it looks like. Beautiful, isn't it? Well worth travelling this way if you've never done it. There's some great roads. We've got the cruise control on going up the hill. Okay, so the speed's dropping. I think we're coming up to the tunnel. I'm going to switch off now. And uh, I'll see the other side. So here we are on YouTube. Back in Andorra. This is the, the queue for customs. Uh, at the moment, they don't seem to be um, stopping much. I think the search you're more likely to be searched on your exit than on the entry. So if you was going all the way across into, say, France, you'd probably get searched going to France if you um, had nothing to declare, of course. But um, on the way in, they don't seem too bothered. Well, they've got... People don't normally take stuff into Andorra, they bring it out. <laughs> what we're ready for is something to eat. A nice sandwich. So it's a lot prettier today than when we came in the other day in the rain. <laughs> 